Hello, and welcome to the EPA's Energy Star Portfolio Manager demonstration series. In this video, we will cover the use of EPA's Portfolio Manager tool to comply with state and local building benchmarking ordinances. Energy Star is a voluntary program administered by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency to help commercial building owners and operators improve the energy performance of their properties through strategic energy management. A primary resource provided by Energy Star is the Portfolio Manager tool, which is a free, web-based application to benchmark the energy performance of commercial buildings. While participation in the Energy Star program and the use of its tools and resources is completely voluntary at the national level, a growing number of state and local jurisdictions have decided to require building owners to benchmark and report their property's energy performance and to use the EPA's Portfolio Manager as the primary tool for compliance. If you are required to benchmark your building to comply with a state or local ordinance, the EPA can help you with questions related to the proper use and functioning of the Portfolio Manager tool. However, any questions about state or local ordinances, including those related to deadlines, required data, extensions, exemptions, confirmation of receipt, and or fines for non-compliance should be directed to your state or local jurisdiction. You can find the link to a summary of state and local benchmarking ordinance contacts in the description of this video. Now, we are going to review the steps involved in accurately benchmarking your property, which will help you achieve successful compliance with your city or state's benchmarking ordinance. Before you get started, we encourage you to review and fill out the Portfolio Manager Data Collection Worksheet. This will ensure you have all the necessary information readily at hand prior to entering data into the tool. If you don't already have a Portfolio Manager account, the first step will be to create one. You can do this by navigating to the Portfolio Manager login screen and selecting the option to create a new account. Once you have a Portfolio Manager account, this is where you will log in using the username and password that you set up. When you first log into Portfolio Manager, you will be taken to the My Portfolio screen. If you already have properties in your account, you will see them listed here. If not, now is the time to create them. Begin creating your property by clicking Add a Property. You'll first be taken to a screen where you define your property type. The number of buildings that make up your property and the construction status of your property. From there, you'll need to provide additional basic property information, including name, address, and gross floor area. If your city or state has provided you with a specific ID to use in the benchmarking and reporting process, this is the place to capture that. Click the drop down box, choose the appropriate jurisdiction for which you are entering an ID, and then enter the identifier in the box provided. You can provide up to three of these IDs per property and you will have the opportunity to review and update this information later. Please note that this identifier is one that your city or state has provided and that aligns with their database. It will be different from the property ID assigned by the Portfolio Manager tool itself. Once you've filled out all required information, you'll be taken to a new page where you can provide further details regarding your property use. This is where the information you gathered in the data collection worksheet will come in handy. Based on the primary property type you selected, you will be prompted to enter a few values related to your building's operating parameters. If you have more than one property use that needs to be defined for your building, for instance, an office building with apartments on the top floor, this is where you can define an additional property use. Just remember, the gross floor area allocated to all property uses must add up to the gross floor areas you entered when first setting up the property. And, as you can see here, there are only a limited number of scenarios where you will need to define more than one property use within your building. Once you are done entering use details, click Add Property. Now, your property record has been created in Portfolio Manager. Now that your property details are accounted for, the next step is to add your energy meters and corresponding consumption data. The first thing you'll want to do is to check and see whether one or more of the utilities that serves your property offers streamlined access to energy consumption data for the purpose of benchmarking in Portfolio Manager. The best place to do this is from the Energy tab for your property record. From here, Portfolio Manager will let you know if your utility offers such a service and will provide further information on how to take advantage of this offering. In some cases, you will need to set up a meter record that the utility can use to start passing through consumption data. In other assets, 
the utility will handle both meter setup and subsequent population of consumption data. Other resources to help you identify those utilities offering data access solutions can be found at www.energystar.gov slash utility data. If you need to set up meters at your property, click on the Energy tab for your property record, and then click Add a Meter. From here, you will be prompted to identify all sources of energy used in the operation of your property, as well as the number of meters you are setting up to track the total consumption of each fuel. On the following page, you will be asked for some basic information about each of the meters that you are setting up. This includes the opportunity to edit the meter name as you see fit. Click anywhere in the table to enter data for the required fields. Generally speaking, the date meter became active should be on or before the start date of the first bill you will be entering for this meter. Once you click Create Meters, you will be prompted to enter specific consumption records for each meter that you have created. If you are entering the meter data yourself, these records will typically come directly from the monthly utility invoices you receive. In order for Portfolio Manager to calculate metrics for a given 12-month time period, it will need to see consumption records for all fuels for the full calendar period in question. To generate metrics for the current calendar year, Portfolio Manager requires that each meter capture data that includes the period January 1st through December 31st of that year. In some cases, especially if utilities do not bill according to calendar months, this could mean that more than 12 individual entries are needed for certain meters, in order for Portfolio Manager to see a complete calendar year. For each meter entry, the required inputs will include start date, end date, and consumption or usage quantity. Cost data is optional. Once you click Save Bills, your entries will be captured and the tool will alert you if there are any data irregularities, such as gaps or overlaps between meter entries. If you are required to track and report water data as part of your benchmarking ordinance, you would click on the property level tab titled Water and then follow the process we just discussed. Now that you have entered your property's data into Portfolio Manager, you'll want to confirm that there are no errors or red flags that need to be addressed before submitting to your jurisdiction. To do this, you'll want to use the Data Quality Checker, or DQC. The DQC can be accessed from the Summary tab of your property record. Click on the button that says Check for Possible Errors, and then enter the 12-month ending period that you wish to review for any data issues. If you are required to report data for the current calendar year, you would select December 31st of that year from the drop-down menus, then click Run Checker. The DQC will return a list of any alerts or warnings found for your property. Yellow yield signs indicate atypical data, such as unusually high or low values. If you receive a warning like this, but you know the information is correct, you can ignore it and or include a brief explanation. Red stop signs indicate more urgent alerts that will keep your property from being able to generate portfolio manager metrics until they are resolved. All alerts and warnings will include detailed hyperlinked text that will take you to the section of the portfolio manager where the issue is found. To be clear, the data quality checker will not automatically fix the errors for you. You will need to fix the issues in question using the guidance within the alerts. Once you have reviewed all warnings and resolved all alerts, run the DQC again to confirm that no further flags have been found. Once you've confirmed the accuracy of your benchmarking data, it's time to submit it to your local or state jurisdiction. Typically speaking, you'll be asked to take one of two approaches. A less common approach is that your jurisdiction will ask you to share your entire property record from your portfolio manager account to theirs. If a jurisdiction requires this, it will typically provide specific instructions for how to proceed using the Sharing tab within your Portfolio Manager account to grant read-only access. Remember that in order to share a property record with another Portfolio Manager user, you must first be connected to their account, which is defined by a specific username. The more common approach is that your jurisdiction will set up a standardized data request to which you will be able to respond and submit specified data points that are being requested for a defined time frame. Typically, jurisdictions requiring benchmarking and reporting will publish the link to this request as a URL, either on their website, in a guidance document, and or within an email sent to owners and managers of properties required to report. To respond to a data request, click on the link while logged into your Portfolio Manager account. If you are not logged in when you click the link, you'll be asked to log in and then will be taken directly to the data request page. Here, 
you will see that each data request is accompanied by a set of specific instructions from the requester. Make sure to read your jurisdiction's instructions carefully before responding to the request. Once you are ready to proceed, all you will need to do is select one or more properties for which you are submitting data. The requester will have already defined the time period for which you are reporting, as well as the specific metrics and other data points that will be included in your report. From there, you will click Generate a Response Preview. This process will take you back to the Reporting tab, where your response preview will show up at the top of the list. Choose Preview Response from the Action drop-down menu if you would like to review the metrics that are queued up for inclusion in your report. If there are any properties for which metrics cannot be calculated, you will receive an alert at the top of this table. By clicking through on this alert or by selecting Errors Found in blue text, you will be shown further details about the specific issue and how to resolve, and you will be provided with options for how to proceed. After any updates or corrections have been made, you can click Send Response. You will have the opportunity to indicate who, besides yourself, will receive confirmation of your submittal. This confirmation will also include a copy of the exact data that was submitted to the state or local jurisdiction. Once you have e-signed your data response on the response confirmation page, click Send Data. We encourage you to double check that your response has been submitted. One common error is that users generate the report but never submit it. To make sure you've submitted your report, go back to the Reporting tab in Portfolio Manager where you will be able to view and print a response receipt. You can also check that you received a response receipt via email, which will include a copy of the data submitted. Now that you've submitted your properties for compliance, your job is not over yet. Check out the Energy Star guidelines for energy management to realize your property savings and continue benchmarking. The seven step roadmap will walk you through how to create an action plan, walk through that plan, and recognize your achievements. We hope this video has been useful in preparing you to benchmark your properties and submit your benchmarking data to your state or local jurisdictions. If you would like additional printable guidance on any of the primary steps described in this video, we encourage you to take a look at the additional resources shown here. For information on how to get in touch with your state or local jurisdiction regarding benchmarking requirements, please follow the link in the video description.